Hey, what's going on guys? Carlos, CEO of GAR Capital. Just wanted to go over a couple things. I'm getting a lot of questions about the stock split, what happened today in regards to the market and all that stuff. So I'm here to kind of explain a couple things uh, before I go shoot hoops outside, get some exercise instead of being sitting down all day watching charts. Okay, um, main, main thing here. Uh, Apple's a, the 4 for one split. What does that mean? Okay, so I'm gonna pretend just for argument's sake that the stock is at $400 a share. Let's just do that. It's at 408 now after hours. We're now at uh, 6 p.m. Futures are open and the NASDAQ futures are up 1%, by the way, because the app, Apple is the largest uh, part of NASDAQ. So if you own 100 shares of Apple, correct, and it's at $400 each, they're going to give you three more shares. So instead of having 100 shares, you will have 400 shares. 400 shares of Apple, just a heads up. So if you have 100 shares of Apple, you will have 400 shares of Apple at the price of $100 going at, one from 400 to 100 as an example. So August 31st, if everything held and it's at $400 a share, it will be at $100 a share. Apple has done this before, just so you know. So the main thing is that, what does that mean for the stock moving forward? I'll go over this again in regards to, um, in the morning note, kind of in more detail, this is more of an impromptu uh, Instagram live. But again, that's a really, really big deal. Now, some people don't give a crap, some people do. So I'm the type of person, that's a huge deal. Why would Apple do this? Apple's doing this before to make, they've done this before. I remember when Apple used to trade at $600 a share, and this is years ago. This, I think this is back in 2008. So I think I posted when the last share, uh, uh, share split passed. So the last time we had a stock split on Apple, more people bought shares because it was cheaper. Does that mean the stock is cheaper? No, the stock price is cheaper, but price means is valuation. It's always valuation. Your market cap, your PE, that's how you should value cost. The sticker price, what you're gonna pay for Apple to, on 31st, again, if all things are relative, $400 a share, four to one split, it'll be at $100, just a heads up. So. If you're asking me, someone whose largest position in their portfolio is Apple, will I buy more Apple? Absolutely. Why would I buy more Apple? Because now it's gonna be more accessible to more people. They're gonna see that stock and be like, man, $100 a share, I'm gonna go ahead and buy that because I let's say my budget's $500 to invest today. I can buy five shares, it's an example. But if I'm looking at a stock like a Tesla or a Google, I can't afford that of my $500 budget. Yes, you can buy fractional shares, but do you want the full share? Of course you do, you probably do. Again, optically speaking, it's kind of the saying if you go to the mall, right? And, or you buy something online. And for example, Amazon, the cost of this item is $50, uh, but $10, $10 is shipping. Or do you want $60 item with free shipping? Which one is gonna catch the attention of the shopper? The one that's free shipping. It's marketing. Again, Apple, they're the geniuses of marketing. This is a marketing tactic to bring more capital in. And I love it. I love this move by Tim Cook. In my opinion, this stock should be a $500 stock and it probably will, may not be before the split, but I do believe it goes higher. I've been saying it. Tim, Jim Cramer has been all Apple a long time. And the main thing he's been saying is don't trade it, just own it. That's what I've been doing, just own it. Why haven't other companies have done this? Why is Apple doing this? Why not anyone else? Well, Amazon doesn't really care about shareholders. Jeff Bezos has the mentality of not marketing. He's more of, if you notice, they have more spending. They don't do share buybacks, they don't do dividends. His more is capital allocation to growth, future growth, going to space, AWS, uh, supply chain, different technology, and that's great. There's different ways to run a company. And Amazon, by all means, I own them, they're great. So again, they're not gonna do a stock split anytime soon, just a heads up, they're not, they're not gonna do one. Google, same thing, they're more into buying, st uh, uh, going ahead and just keeping things as is, investing their money into their businesses and growing. They don't pay a dividend either. Now, do they do buybacks? Yes, they do. They do do buybacks, but Apple does it all. Apple, buy. they do buybacks, they do stock splits, they do <laughs> dividends, I mean, you're getting everything in one, and it's kind of weird. It's like a value mixed with the growth. I've said to, to me, I've been saying there's only really a handful of bulletproof stocks that are like, you just want to hold for the rest of your life. Apple's one of them, Microsoft's another, 
Amazon's another, and then United Health is another. Those are my four. Microsoft, if I had to pick a stock that would probably do a stock split next, but it wouldn't be necessary, it would probably be Microsoft, but they don't need it. The stock is like at 200. So I don't see them doing it anytime soon, but Apple would have been the best candidate. Again, at $400 a share, it's not 408. Again, I will be buying more Apple shares on this news because of the accessibility of people buying more shares. I wanna be a part of that. Again, I just wanted an excuse to buy more. I've been buying uh, Apple on every dip. As our investment club has been heavy Apple. We've been on it. And uh, that's one of our top 10 stocks of 2020. If you have not checked that out, that's on our YouTube channel. It's on our podcast. We've been saying it. We do love it. If you want to buy the stock before the split, I think it's before the 15th of August and then the 31st is when it actually starts. So if you want to get in, again, do not let the stock split be the only reason you buy Apple. Please, that's not a green light to just put your house into it. No, you want to make sure you're prudent and understand that, A, do I like this business? Are they growing? Or do I see segments of their business growing? For example, the way I look at Apple, I'm seeing their services revenue at 22% of their entire revenue. They're not just a phone company anymore. I remember people saying, oh, it's just the iPhone. Now it's just the iPhone is your key to everything. It's the revenue stream. It's the actual key to get you to do other products. And the ecosystem of Apple is, to me, probably the best you can get out there. And as someone that actually has Apple products, and I love Apple, I mean, what better way than to invest in things you actually use on a daily basis or you actually own the products of? For example, Spotify, I use Spotify every day. I own the stock. I mean, that's probably the best advice I can give to newcomers and new individuals who are into the stock market. What stock should I invest in? Always pick stocks that you do business with. If your carrier is AT&T, that's a really good start. If you like shopping at Costco, that's another great start. Go ahead and get with companies that you know that you're comfortable with. Let's say you are a big Apple fan. Oh my God, you love Apple iPhones, iPads, you wear the watch, everything. Go ahead and buy Apple too because that'll keep you stuck with it and sticking through the tough times when it drops because you understand like, hey, you know, I like this company. I'm not just trading it. I'm owning it for the long term. So again, it's, it's better to think of it that way in a sense than just buying and selling all day because that's more of the options trading, that's more stock trading. But Apple, again, I've been saying it's a buy for a while now. I've owned Apple now since it was at 180-ish and just holding it. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, don't buy the stock because they're gonna split. That's a really dumb reason to do anything. But again, if you wanted to buy the stock anyways and you were already kind of looking at an opportunity, this is a way to, to, to really get in, in my opinion. You can wait for the split. If you don't have a lot of cash, that's fine. Um, that, that's a completely fine. Again, it's a long-term investment. You're not looking at it to sell tomorrow. But again, uh, Apple, it's a winner. And that's basically how it works, guys. It's a four to one split, very, very straightforward. Um, how does it affect the dividend? They'll still pay the dividend. It's still relative. So again, let's say if they paid $4 in dividend, it'll be $1 per share per dividend. Kind of makes sense, right? It's the same deal, nothing really changes. The good news is that with this kind of split, you may see a dividend increase. Keep in mind, Apple has $180 billion in their balance sheet. So that's a lot of money that can do more buybacks, they can increase the dividend. Again, due to COVID, I'm obviously, you're probably not seeing a ton of uh, companies increasing dividend. Again, just a couple of them names that have uh, Altria has increased their dividend. I think Exxon is raising cash in order to keep their dividend in play. They want to keep their investors. So again, these are companies that are trying to keep those, those investors happy because they're not getting tons of growth. But with Apple, you're getting the growth. They're up like 75% this year or something like around there. And I mean, what, what more can you say about a company that had a blockbuster number, a blockbuster quarter, and it tends to be, this quarter tends to be the slow quarter. So, I mean, take that out as you want. I really was nervous about Apple. I didn't buy calls in it, but I own the stock. So again, I'm happy. The main thing was that I thought they would delay the iPhone uh, release. It is gonna be released. It's gonna be delayed a couple of weeks. But again, that 5G super cycle, that's really big for that company. Again, we know that's the key to unlock everything. Again, the, the iPhone, your iPhone here, it's the key to unlock your ecosystem. Again, you're gonna get services, you're gonna get apps, you're gonna get the cloud, you're gonna get music they know that you're gonna be stuck on this thing and that's the key. 
Um, maybe you don't own a Mac, maybe you're more of a Windows guy, maybe you're a PC gamer, maybe Microsoft's for you because you use the Windows OS. Um, so that's that's mainly your thing and I would just look at that. Amazon had a great quarter too. Um, their actual profit margins were insane. Great to see that. Again, I'm an owner of Amazon. I'm not looking to buy anymore. I'll buy some on, on dips, but Apple is the one I will truly be looking at to buy tomorrow and add some. But calls for tomorrow, no. I'm not buying calls tomorrow. Tomorrow's expiry day. So does it dilute the value? It does not dilute the value because it's equal the same. It doesn't really change anything. Again, all we're doing is said, let's think of it this way. Let's buy a pizza together. A hot and ready Little Caesars pizza. I love hot and ready Little Caesars. One pizza. So what's the same? You have one pie. If I gave you four slices, quarter of it, it's still the whole pie, right? I just cut it. Nothing was taken out. How about I slice that in eight? It's still yours. I just sliced it. Big deal. It's the same thing. It's still the same deal. Okay, so what's worth more, four quarters or a dollar bill? It's the same value, it's just different. That's the way you kind of have to look at it. So that's your main thing. But uh, I just wanted to give kind of a update on Apple. Google had a, had a decent quarter as well. Facebook knocked it out of the park too. So again, QQQs are rising with it. Um, Apple, there's not much more you could say. Apple was the big winner to me. They had a, a stellar quarter. I mean, great. I think this stock split shows you that they are looking out for shareholders. They want to attract new capital to people that maybe cannot afford it. Robinhood is an example. That's what they'll say on Twitter. doesn't mean everyone at Robinhood doesn't have money because that's not true. But I'm saying in general that they want to attract those investors. They even said, Tim Cook said, we want people to look at our stock as accessible. That's the big deal. So the question I think everyone's going to ask me, do I buy now? That's a really difficult question to answer for you. Everyone is different. Understand that everyone is different. I don't know your personal finance situation. I don't know how much money you have. I don't know how much risk you have. What's your what's your target time to hold it? If you're just asking me, hey, should I just buy and hold? Absolutely. Absolutely, you should buy and hold the stock without a doubt. Now, if you're the type where I just want to hold it because I'm saving for a house and I need to sell the stock before I close. No, then you need that money. That's the main thing. So. It really depends. Do you have an emergency fund? Do you have no credit card debt? If your question, your answer is to yes on both, then yes, you can buy some Apple. If you do not have those two things done, no, no, absolutely not. Uh, you should definitely save your emergency fund three to six months of expenses, like I've been saying, and get out of credit card debt or any bad debt. Uh, student loans, I mean, I, I guess you could separate that because that's gonna take a while. But other than that, that's kind of, I just wanted to get on this and kind of explain a little bit about this about this split. Again, it was big news to me. I saw the market jump on that. Th to be honest with you, I think the split was about 50% of that move that was up today. So, I mean, take a look at it. I mean, you don't have to buy tomorrow. Again, guys, don't feel like you're in a rush to buy tomorrow. Get a good price. Get a uh, price that you want to get in. If let's say you want to buy 200 shares or 100 shares or 50 shares or 20 shares. Let's say you want to buy 10 shares. Why don't you buy three tomorrow, two next week, Three, three to next week and two. So you can average out a good price. Don't put it all in one shot. So again, I don't want to pump anything here. Forget it. I don't think Apple needs me to pump anything. They're a huge company. They're the largest company. Just understand that for you as the individual investor, kind of find the good price. You know you. You know exactly what your goals are. You know exactly your personal finance situation. I want you to invest. But if you have debt and you don't have a, a, a savings account of three to six months of expenses, I don't want you to buy any stocks personally. I would not. I would just be saying, hey, watch your risk, get your money in check, and go from there. So think a bit long term, guys. I want you guys to be investors and think long term and grow your wealth correctly and and slowly. I don't want you to try to be a millionaire overnight. That's not what we're trying to do. I don't own a Lambo. I'm not trying to do all that crap. I'm just telling you stuff that I would tell my grandmother, my mother, my cousin, my sister, my brother. I would tell them the exact same advice I'm telling you. It's just, hey, get rich carefully. That's the main deal. So again, I do like Apple, of course. I do like Amazon. I do like Google. I still like Facebook. And guys, at the end of the day, if really money is an issue and you can't see yourself spending $4 a share and you don't have that kind of money, SPYG, guys. SPYG has all those big companies in it. It's an ETF. You get the diversification. You get a dividend. It's $40 a share. That's probably your best bet. I would just stick with SPYG. I buy some every week, $300 a week personally, and I just let it ride. To me, I just think to myself, okay, what can I cut out of my expenses? Obviously, there, since we're inside and we're not doing anything, $300 of my expenses, hey, you know what? I can save $300 a week by not doing this. Okay, I'm dumping it in SPYG. 
That's how I do it. Just dump it in there. And then, you know, guys, if you're ever in a pinch and you need to ever sell it, remember, stocks are very liquid. These big caps tech stocks are very liquid. You could sell it if you absolutely need to. So that money's not going to, you're not going to lose, you know, 70% overnight. So that's the main thing. So that's your deal. Uh, yeah, for sure. I was planning on it, but profits are profits. Of course, of course. So your main thing, guys, I just wanted to go over those things with Apple. Hope this video, impromptu video, helped answer some questions. And, uh, you know, really do appreciate you guys following us. 80,000 followers. I'm so honored and humbled. Thank you so much for following us. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we have a lot of fun with you guys. The only thing I kind of hope that we get away from is those stupid scammers on the comment section. Drives me nuts, but I don't know how to get away from that. But the deal. Uh, if I have 5,000, should I buy now? Again, that's a question. One of the questions there was, if I have $5,000, should I buy now? That's a very vague question. I don't know your personal finance situation. Is that your own $5,000 that you have? Is that all the money you have? Then absolutely not. If that's money you like, hey, you know, I just made $5,000 because I closed a big deal and you're a real estate guy. Yeah, sure, that's fine. You know, as long as your house is in order, I'm with you going ahead and buying Apple if you want. So again, if it's your last $5,000 and you're trying to go ahead and to throw it into red and hoping to get red and double your money, no, that's not what I want you to do. Absolutely not. Um, my target price to buy an Apple would probably be, I mean, if it goes to 400, but it's below 400, yeah. But I mean, you could, I mean, guys, don't don't kill yourself yourselves over a couple of bucks. You know, let's say it gets to 410, you're like, I really want it at four dollars, four hundred dollars. I mean, ten bucks. I mean, just go, you know, buy what you want. You know, don't wait for a sale at the end of the day. Again, when it comes to longer term investing and you want to add to your position, yes, wait for dips. That's what I usually do. But if you're trying to initiate your position and you truly want to get in, yeah, I mean, wait for it. Wait, just get in when you when you like. Again, Apple's not going to move more than 4% in a day, to be honest with you. So that's your deal. If you're trying to buy before the split, I would say buy before the split if you wanted to. I think the split is gonna be a good thing. It's a bullish indicator for me, and I think long-term it's great. We've been saying that for a while, so there you go. Um, I hope this video helps. We'll leave it there. Um, I, I know there's a lot of questions that I didn't get to answer, but again, I will catch you guys tomorrow for the morning note at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to like and subscribe to those videos. Uh, just a heads up, Saturday will be the price increase in the one-on-one uh, -on -one teaching. Just wanted to give you a heads up because that'll be changing. So if you do want to get in, you need to message Kevin or you need to message Kevin, uh, Nick, Kevin or Nick uh, at Nick, uh, Nick G.A. or Capital or at Kev G.A. or Capital. If you have any questions, they'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Thank you so much, guys. I'm off to play some basketball, get some exercise in. Have a great rest of your night, guys. Uh, stay green and we'll catch you guys soon.